All right, we'll get things started. I'm Gary Douglas, President of North Country Chamber of Commerce, and it's been our great pleasure once again for the third year in a row, which by the way says a lot, uh, to join with our Assemblyman Billy Jones and hosting another visit to the North Country uh, by the speaker, uh, Carl Hasty. Uh, there's that, uh, that old song that says, if the phone doesn't ring, it's me. That kind of used to define our former relationship of prior speakers, but that's not the case anymore. <laughs> uh, he's been accessible. Uh, he's just been a great partner, a great advocate for the area, and it's just a delight for the chamber uh, to once again interact with him and have him here for his third visit for the third year to the North Country, his second visit to Bombardier. Um, it's my uh, pleasure at this time to turn things over to David Vanderwee from Bombardier. Okay, David. Thank you very much. So uh, welcome everyone. Um, very, very happy to uh, have all of you here and especially we're very, very happy to have the Speaker Hasty, Assemblyman Jones here as well, to uh, very, very strong supporters for this plant and our activities in New York. Um, you know, Bombardier has a very, very active presence in New York. We have a number of different sites. We do overhauls, we build new cars, we support uh, cars entering into production into New York. And of course, what a lot of, what a lot of people know is we have our headquarters for our U.S. operations right there in New York. So we have over a thousand employees. We uh, have a significant supply base. We have a lot of activity and it's really an important facility for us, for the U.S., not only today, but also far into the future. What not a lot of people know is that as we grow, and we are growing in the U.S., and there's a lot of opportunity for us in Bombardier, Plattsburgh will remain our lead site. And what does that mean? That means that the leadership, the technical capability, the engineering will originate out of here and will be shared across other U.S. sites as we grow to go after new opportunities. So uh, Plattsburgh remains an absolutely essential, intricate part of our strategy and we're very, very happy to share that with you today. To introduce our special guest, our Assemblyman Billy Jones, who continues to be just a fantastic advocate for the North Country and our transportation equipment companies and all matters. And I know the speaker has come to value him as a great voice from the North Country as well. Billy? Sure. Well, it's great to be here, and it's, uh, it's great to have the speaker uh, back here. Uh, you know, the relationship we have is, is a very strong relationship and that that is good for all of us here in New York and especially here in the North Country. Uh, he takes a particular and a keen interest in uh, the manufacturing, the transportation manufacturing cluster we have here and Bombardier obviously is a big piece of that and people uh, uh, people ask all the time what you know why why are we interested in what goes on with the MTA? Why are we interested in what goes on in New York City? It's very simple because they, we manufacture stuff right here in Plattsburgh and in the North Country, and that relates to jobs and obviously our, our economy here. So the speaker realizes that. I'm very happy that, uh, that he takes a keen interest in uh, just talking about a few things. He always mentions uh, this plant and what, uh, what they do here and in the entire North Country and what they do when we're talking about uh, touchy issues uh, concerning the MTA, and it's a great relationship that is formed and uh, will continue to form and it's extremely important that he comes here. He's a great speaker. He speaks for all of New York State and uh, we're really happy to have him here. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl Hasty. Great. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, Carl, for your comments. To, to all of the, uh, I'd say the, uh, the leadership here at Bombardier, um, as Billy mentioned, first of all, I didn't realize there was this much press in, uh, in, in, in Plattsburgh. But, um, you know, it's a pleasure to be here, and one of the things that I, that I always try to make the point that I think for political reasons, uh, people try to say that there's, uh, you know, there's upstate, downstate issue. But one of the reasons why Billy mentioned that, I like to mention the Bombardier uh, facility is, it is an absolute example of how there is no disconnect between upstate and, uh, and downstate. That um, for the MTA, we need the cars. The cars are, are built here. Uh, so. Even the things in, in producing financing uh, as a congestion pricing, which is a contentious vote in the city, um, you know, we're trying to capitalize uh, almost $40 billion a year. Well, this got it to 28. Hopefully, the feds will do something for us. Uh, but the congestion pricing, the plan is to get us around $28 billion of, uh, of capitalization. And 
to me, uh, it, it, it wouldn't make sense if New York companies are not a part of that. And I think that, um, so that's why I continue to push and, and, and do these tours to show the relationship between upstate and downstate. I think the only difference is always just miles in between. And you have a little more extreme weather in the winter than we do down <laughs> in, the, in the city. But I like to, to always talk about the things that uh, connect New York is not the things that, uh, that separates a, a New Yorkers. And that's why um, every year I try to, uh, to make it around to, uh, to all parts of the state um, uh, outside. Uh, everybody always joked that, uh, you know, for us New Yorkers, particularly somebody who lives in the Bronx, that anything north of the Bronx is upstate New York. So, uh, so I just want to come and let uh, people know that that's not true. We know that there's uh, beautiful parts of this state, and they have their own different section names, uh, and not everything is just considered up, upstate New York. But, but I think this is a, an important. Uh, trip. This is my first uh, stop for the tour. Usually, I would say Billy for uh, uh, August. Or so, but uh, um, but but I wanted to come up here early, uh, particularly uh, with uh, what happened in, in, in this year's budget and having to vote for uh, congestion pricing in the city, uh, which we hope will raise uh, around a billion dollars a year, so that we can then uh, float bonds to uh, build more trains and get a new signal system, which I think is the most. Uh, Pressing thing, you guys don't build signal systems here, uh, but that uh, so, so we can have a. Uh, I think we have 21st century uh, rail cars. I just think we don't have a 21st century uh, signal system in the city, and a lot of the delays. But this is a big part. So um, uh, Bombardier is a big part of what we're trying to do in the city to just make it a very successful uh, transportation system, so my constituents uh, can get to work on time and not be delayed. So thank you again for everybody for having me in in, uh, in Plattsburgh. And uh, this won't be my last time here. That's, that's frustration of being in the minority. Um, I think uh, when Billy gets up in conference and raises a concern, we try to uh, to address those uh, you know those concerns. I wouldn't say that uh, we didn't uh, have respect for people's values, but when you're now used to being in the majority for you know uh, 90 out of 100 years, you know the great thing is to, to is to complain. But we. We sit in the conference and we try to make sure that when we come out with a plan, that I don't want a, a few members of the conference coming out upset or felt like they are they are left out. So we do the best we can. You know, it's 107 members. It's a, a lot of opinions, a lot of diversity, uh, and a lot of regions. But we, I do think we do the best we can in trying to take care of everybody's concerns. Yeah, just one follow up. There's two of our most prominent North Country politicians. We're actually talking about dividing New York State or changing the way state senators are chosen. Um, and, and these it's are all political. Th this is a, 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 a very fact of, of what I'm saying is, and I'm not, I think the, the city is really the economic engine of, you know, of, of the state. And, and uh, you know, people say they're upset that uh, a lot of elected officials are from the city. Well, we represent almost half the, the state lives in the, in the city of New York, so there will be a lot of elected officials uh, you know, from there. But I think uh, dividing the state, I don't know how that would help upstate New York, uh, particularly with the struggles with the upstate economy. Um, how would that help if you um, separate yourself from uh, of the city, uh, city of New York? A lot of the uh, funding mechanisms that we do for upstate New York that, we're gladly, that we gladly do uh, comes from a lot of uh, the benefits of the downstate economy. So I think it's more of a political uh, thing, uh, thing to do. And uh, because I guess the state is becoming more democratic, uh, it's great for a Republican and Senator to say, just give every county um, a, uh, a, a Senator because of the 62 counties, I think probably 40 of the 62 counties probably have uh, 
more of a Republican, I'd say, voting base than a Democratic voting base. Kind of going off that first question, with some of the progressive policies that we saw, do you think members may have a little bit of a challenging time in some of the more moderate districts keeping or winning their seats? Um, no, because I don't think that anything we did was so extreme. Again, if you, it, it's the jo minority's job to complain. If they said that the, uh, the, the Democratic parties in charge were great, how could they go make their case in elections? Um, but we did take uh, into consideration, uh, even like on the farm workers, um, I know, uh, you know, we, even in the assembly, uh, you know, our bill long uh, worked off of, uh, um, you know, 40 hours before overtime, but we compromised and went to 60 hours. I mean, so there are concessions that were made to try to make everybody happy, but in, unfortunately in politics, um, I think if we ever got to a point that if something we did made 100% of the people happy, it would be a little strange, I would think, that, uh, if that happened. And I'm saying that facetiously, but, but, in, but in reality, um, you know, a lot of the Republican senators are used to being in the majority. They're not in the majority now, and they just are, I guess, politically frustrated. Mr. Speaker, there were a lot of progressive measures that actually didn't move forward, that you didn't get to. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that, and which ones would you have liked to have seen you know, be finalized. Well, I'll say this. They, you know, we don't just do things in a, in a vacuum. We listen to our members. We do statewide polling to see how uh, the people in, this, in the state feel. Uh, so we don't just sit in a conference room and just uh, shrug our shoulders and say we're just going to do what we believe. Uh, we listen to our members, and, we, and uh, we usually do polling twice a year to give members an idea of what their constituents are saying and what people are saying uh, statewide. Um, I'd say the things that, I'd say probably the one, the one uh, missing thing was still, you know, the contention around uh, the legalization of adult use marijuana. Polling-wise, it was almost two to one people in favor of, uh, and, and this was statewide, uh, even in upstate New York, uh, you know, uh, people polling-wise were, were supportive of uh, legalizing adult use uh, marijuana. So I'd say that's one of the, the, the things that I think that, uh, Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Do you think that uh, rather than the assembly and the Senate working on that, it should go to the voters? Um, well, you know, we do have a representative uh, uh, system, and you elect people to um, uh, to represent you. Uh, I don't know if we want to go to a referendum government on on every single issue. Usually when we put things, uh, but that is an option because we do sometimes put constitutional amendments out. But, um, but if the polling, you know, indi indicates that it's, uh, you know, very positive, that's usually an indication for us that people would be okay. Um, news broke um, yesterday, today, that the head of the State Committee on Open Government has been fired, Robert Freeman. Um, what you got no questions on trains? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. No, Robert, yeah, Robert Freeman, what's your reaction to his firing and the reason for his firing? Um, to be honest, I got up here, I got up to Albany very late last night, and then I got up here, uh, uh, woke up very early to get here. I haven't read uh, the entire um, story, but from, uh, from what I'm hearing from my wonderful director of communications, it's, uh, you know, any time that... Um, we have a situation where um, someone is being uh, uh, sexually harassed or or put in a, in a tough position. I think it's a it's a black mark uh, to you know to all of government, um, and we, that's why we tried this year. We passed even some more stringent uh, laws around sexual harassment because uh, we want uh, people, particularly women, because we know most of the the cases of sexual harassment involve women. You know, men sometimes get it, but we really want people to. Uh, be able to go to work and uh, not be harassed and, and just be able to do your job and not worry about uh, someone acting in inappropriately towards you. Mr. Speaker, uh, Senator Tim Kennedy said that the Assembly, using his words, dropped the ball when it came to limo safety and passing bills to improve limo safety. Uh, do you uh, agree with well, his assessment and is there regret that the, the Assembly wasn't able to 
come to agreement with the Senate on, on more versions of... I mean, there's things I could say that I'm disappointed that the Senate didn't do, but what, what I would hope that people would understand is even though it's a Democratic Assembly and a Democratic uh, uh, Senate, um, we're not always going to agree on 100 percent. I'm sure there's more agreement than there was when there was a Republican Senate. And there was a, you know, a, a huge package of bills. We agreed on two of them. Um, but I'm sorry that Senator Kennedy feels that way. But, you know, there's two years in a legislative session. And let's see. And, uh, and you know, uh, we have no opposition of, uh, of going back at it. But I don't think it's good uh, to, uh, you know, attack the other House of Legislature um, on, on things you didn't agree with. Because then we can play that game all day. Because you asked me about the marijuana question. And it could easily, you know, be put on them. So I don't think that we in the uh, Assembly and Senate particularly should be uh, having those kind of uh, blaming sessions. You mentioned uh, asking questions about rail. You visited Bombardier a few mm -hmm. times now. Yeah, my second time. Yeah. What about the other transportation assembly plants here in the region? We assemble buses, things like that. How much of a linkage and how much more of a strengthening of a linkage between this region and downstate do you think there could be? Well, it, it's actually significant. We, you know, we were in conference and we were talking about congestion pricing and, and uh, trying to make the members feel, understand why it was so important. Because remember, we only have 62 uh, uh, Democrats in the, in the city. And so, of course, in order to pass a bill, we need at least 14 people outside of the city. So to try to get people to understand this is something that we're all in together, we actually have uh, um, a map uh, that the MTA gives us that shows all of the ec economic impacts that every region has. So I'm a big supporter of that, and I, it's a big reason why I, you know, I've taught Buffalo to see where they, uh, they uh, make the buses, and, and the Southern Tier. I've gone to all places around the state uh, because I want to keep reminding people that there are things that really connect people in upstate and western New York and in the North Country, I guess I make sure I cover all my central New York, the Hudson Valley. I want to make sure that w people understand that those of us in the city understand there's a real connection uh, between all of us. And again, that goes back to my point about this wanting to divide the state uh, when here it is, the, the MTA is a major economic engine for places uh, north of the city. Peter, let me ask one more question. Um, one of the things that is a big economic driver in the North Country is the state correction system. One of the largest employers, one of the largest economic drivers. We saw two more state prisons close under this latest budget. Do you think the correction system needs to be downsized further? Well, for, for one, uh, you know, representing a district that feeds uh, the population, it's very... Um, you mean the population? of inmates, it is a difficult thing for someone to say that uh, it's an economic development thing. It's, so it's very sensitive to, uh, to us. But if the, if the prison population is, in, is decreasing uh, based on uh, the different uh, uh, criminal justice reforms and things like that, I think we have to figure out uh, other ways. Uh, we don't want the economy of upstate New York to fail but we don't want the economy of New York to succeed just to keep people, uh, just by keeping people in prison. But even under this last uh, closing of two prisons, no jobs were lost. Uh, the uh, the uh, correction officers and, and all the other affected employees will be uh, uh, reassigned to other places. So we're sensitive to the issue of the jobs, but it is a little awkward for us to say, you know, prisons is economic development. Mr. Speaker, aside from the marijuana legalization, uh, the governor proclaimed that this was the most productive legislative session in modern history. Mm -hmm. Do you share that assessment? I, I do. There were things, um, and, and let me just say this: when uh, uh, when uh, I had to deal with John Flanagan as the you know as the Senate Majority Leader, John's a pleasant guy, but we just had different you know I ideologies. But now with a, a Democratic Senate, a lot of the bills that we supported. The Senate ended up supporting, so that's why when you say uh, it was very successful, it was because uh, bills that we had supported in the Assembly that we couldn't get support in the Senate, uh, you now had Senate sponsors. You always had Senate Democratic Senate sponsors who um, 
who who supported the bills, but now they're in the majority and they're able to, to move them. So uh, there's a laundry list of things, you know, voting reforms, um, sexual harassment, uh, just just landmark things that we did. Child Victims Act uh, was something that the Senate Republicans weren't in favor of doing. So there were so many landmark pieces of legislation uh, that we were able uh, uh, to do, uh, even congestion pricing for the city. <coughs> Excuse me, because the uh, Senate Republicans weren't in support of it, and and I'm always going to come back to that because again, this is the reason for my trip, that providing a a funding uh, stream for the MTA to spend uh, 40 billion dollars uh, is helpful to the rest of the state. Um, so we were able, so you know, those landmark things that we were able to come together on. But as I said, we didn't agree on everything, and I'm. Disappointed in Senator Kennedy's comments, but uh, um, but I think overall, I think the Democratic Assembly and the Democratic Senate worked very well together. Guys, we're going to have to along those. We're going to have to do one more question. Okay. So can we maybe give it to somebody that didn't have their question? Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm the bad person. I got to get get the, the show on the road. If you need to do a pull aside, we can. I guess I'll ask. All right, go for somebody it. Somebody else's. Go for it. You know, along the lines of, of the question that you were answering from Tom, you know, there's been some speculation in some media, especially out of Albany, that uh, the three people in the room situation, uh, Governor Cuomo was kind of pushed out of it, and that's why you guys were able to accomplish what you were doing. What really happened? I would say, you know, I, I was on a on Susan Arbetti's show earlier, and she asked me almost the same question. I said. When there was a Republican Senate and a uh, led Senate and a Democrat led assembly, the governor kind of had to play the referee sometimes to help us get to a place. Um, but that role isn't necessary. It doesn't mean the governor is not involved, but the role of the referee is not necessarily needed as much because when you have a Democratic sponsor in the Senate with a bill and the assembly sponsor with a bill, you it's an easy negotiation. Not what. Uh, part of my body am I going to give up for this piece of legislation that I want for uh, in the trade uh, Republicans. So I would just say the governor's uh, necessity to be a referee wasn't as needed or prominent. But he was involved. A lot of our three-way agreements on climate change, uh, sexual harassment, raising the statute of limitations on rape, all of those things the governor was, was heavily involved in. Thank you. Thank you again for everybody for having me up here. Join us for a Michigan.